Hello, this is the overview lecture for lab assignment one. This lab assignment relates to material that is presented in lectures two through four. Related educational materials are in section 1.3 and 1.4. Basic goals for this lab assignment primarily revolve around resistors. We're going to first take a look at examining resistance using some basic statistical analysis techniques. We'll take a look at resistances across a number of resistors, calculate mean values of resistance, median values of resistance, and standard deviations in order to get a feeling for how much resistances can vary from resistor to resistor. The actual nominal value of a resistor is not necessarily the same value that that resistor's resistance actually is. We'll also take a look at a statistical analysis of Ohm's law. From a voltage current curve, we can determine the resistance. The resistance is simply the slope of that curve. So what we can do is apply a voltage to a resistor, measure a current. By varying the voltage, the current will vary. We can plot various values of voltage versus current. The slope of that line should give us the resistance value of the resistor that we're using. However, since this is actual data, those points will not all lie exactly on a single straight line. There will be some noise in the data. There will be some inconsistencies. What we want to do is determine a best fit straight line using statistical analysis. That is called a linear regression. We are going to fit a straight line to the data. We'll also take a look at resistance nonlinearities. Now, as I mentioned previously, all physical devices are nonlinear to some extent. We tend to pretend that they're linear. Generally, that's a close enough approximation over some range of values. What we're going to do is take a resistor, vary the voltage applied to the resistor, take a look at the current. By applying enough voltage to the resistor, we can drive the resistance out of its linear operating range. This will cause the resistor to heat up excessively. We will actually end up burning out the resistor in this lab assignment. Make sure you don't touch the resistor during this section of the lab because it will get extremely hot. Also perform this section of the lab in a well-ventilated area. The resistor may start to smoke. Finally, mostly for fun, we will implement a dusk to dawn light using a photoresistor. We actually have a device whose resistance varies as light is applied to it. That, in conjunction with a fixed resistor, can provide us a voltage which varies with light intensity. We can use that voltage to switch a BJT on or off to provide current to an LED. So when we darken the photoresistor, the LED light will go on. It will function somewhat like a dusk to dawn light. The general idea there is to take a look at some Kirchhoff's laws to see what the voltage is doing at the BJT base and use the BJT as a switch to turn on a light. The basic equations for the statistical analyses that we'll be doing are presented here. Our mean value is just what we generally colloquially think of as an average. We add up all our data values and divide by the total number of points we have. A median is slightly different. What you're doing for a median is picking a value which has the same number of data points above it as below it. This is described more completely in the written material associated with this lab assignment. The standard deviation is essentially giving you a feeling for how much spread there is around the mean for the data. This depends on the difference between the individual data points, y sub i, and the mean value, y bar. So you square those distances, add them up, take the square root, divide by 1 over the number of values minus 1. Now, I won't ask you to implement these equations directly. We will use MATLAB, if it is available to you, to calculate a mean, a median, and a standard deviation. If you do not have access to MATLAB, Excel will work just fine for this. Okay, A few basic MATLAB commands related to statistical analysis. What I'm doing is assuming that your data values are stored in a vector named y. To calculate a mean of those values, the command is just mean. You send it an argument, which is simply the variables y, so mean of y. A median is constructed using the median command. Again, you send the data values to the median function. It sends you back the median value of those 
data values. Standard deviation command, the function is std. You again send it the vector of data points. It returns you the standard deviation of those data points. Now let's demonstrate the type of measurements that I'm talking about here. I have a number of what are supposed to be 10 kilo ohm resistors. I can measure the resistance of each of these resistors using my DMM. Let me allow it to auto scale itself. If I connect across the terminals of the resistor, this resistor is approximately 9.9 .9 kilo ohms. Another resistor might have a slightly di different resistance value. This is 9.88 kilo ohms. Yet another resistor, almost exactly 10 kilo ohms. Our final sample is a little over 10 kilo ohms, 10.05 kilo ohms. So you can see that these resistances, although they nominally have all the same resistance values, their resistances actually vary slightly. That can have an effect on your circuit's operation. Make sure that when you are using an electrical component, you measure the values that are important to you, such as resistances, and keep track of those in your lab notebook, so that if you have some sort of anomalous behavior out of your circuit, you can track back to see whether that is due to some off-nominal component value. So for this particular experiment, you're supposed to be getting an idea as to how much resistances can change for a given nominal resistor. Now let's talk a little bit more about linear regression. We have a set of data values to which we want to fit a straight line. The equation for a straight line is y is equal to m times x plus b, where x is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. So you have a bunch of data values, x1, x2, x3, x4, on up to x sub n, and a number of corresponding y values, y1, y2, y3, on up to y sub n. We can use those data points to fit a best straight line curve to the data. Now, not all of the data points will typically lie on that line. We can use the correlation coefficient, typically abbreviated as R, to describe how well the resulting line approximates the data. A correlation coefficient of 1 means that all the data points perfectly lie on the straight line. A correlation coefficient of 0 means that there is really no relationship between the data points in a straight line. A correlation coefficient of negative 1 means that the data points lie exactly on a line, but that the slope of the line is negative. Again, a few MATLAB commands related to linear regression. In order to create a best fit line, you can use the command polyfit. Polyfit accepts three arguments. X, which is an array containing your X values. Y, an array containing your Y values. So those are the data points corresponding to your independent and dependent variables. The third input to the polyfit command is the order of the polynomial you want to fit to the data. We are using a straight line. We will send it a 1. What gets returned from that are the coefficients m and b of the straight line approximating the data. To calculate a correlation coefficient using MATLAB, the command is C-O-R-R-C-O-E-F. Again, you simply send that the vectors containing the x and y data. It returns you a correlation coefficient matrix. The off-diagonal elements of that matrix give you the correlation coefficient between the x and the y data values. The on-diagonal data points will always be 1 in the correlation coefficient, simply means that x is perfectly correlated with itself and y is perfectly correlated with itself. Now let's take a look at measuring some voltage current characteristics for a resistor and using Ohm's law to estimate the resistance from those values. Wired up my circuit here, I have a 10 ohm resistor. I'm applying power using VP plus to this resistor. Now I'm going to use my DMM to measure current through the resistor. So my power goes to the positive lead on the DMM, current goes through the DMM and then back out to the resistor. This is now the positive terminal of the resistor. Current flows through this and goes back to ground. So I'm 